Hello everybody, it is Baron Tormunder here. Now, many of you will know that I have a game out on Steam at the moment. Um, I also, you know, through my lifetime, I've actually published three games. And one way or another, you know, I've been doing game design and development all my life. Even though a lot of that has been, you know, pen and paper stuff. And maybe about 50 other games that I've attempted to write, but never got through to publishing for various reasons um mainly due to the fact that when you get so far along doing some testing you realize that the idea you had was not necessarily as good as you thought it was <laughs> anyway however what i did not expect when i purchased this game was for it to actually be a very useful tool and insight into developing an mmo now, many people that have done game design development or just like the GM for their local friends, they always think, oh, yeah, I would love to be part of a, a game design team to create my own MMO, etc. And I've always looked at doing something like that from a, you know, a world building or story or quest line. And thinking of things like, oh, yeah, this is the way I would handle crafting or, or whatnot. But I never even thought about some of the issues that you have in running an MMO until I actually played this crazy game, which, as I was saying, is offering a simulation tool, develop a simulation tool, far beyond what I thought it was going to offer. Now, one of the issues that you are getting in this game, let me just quickly show you, is represented by this graph. It shows quite clearly that I have a lot of level two players and that goes down to just a few level seven. Now, I actually have a level eight zone, but there's nobody there yet. Now, one of the things that happened was the first person that eventually got to the level seven zone. Well, they were on their own. They got into the level seven zone. They reached level seven. But they are the only player in that zone. So, I mean, they can't do group quests. They couldn't even just go in to try and do some of the basic quests with nobody else around. They're walking into areas where mobs are as the only player and as the downside of that is they're getting killed a lot and then they ended up rage quitting they unsubbed and left because they were dying too much and i thought well that's a very interesting problem to have and it's a problem that i'm was there thinking, how do I resolve this issue? And suddenly, I'm walking into issues that you get in real life in MMOs. Now, those issues I've only ever approached from a player's perspective. I've always thought things like, oh, I'm playing WoW now, and the reason like we like WoW Classic is because the real WoW, the, the, the starting areas have been dumbed down to the point whereby they're just pointless. And if you play well classic, you can enjoy the game as it was. And I'm here thinking, well, actually, that's a very real thing that I'm now looking at to resolve this flow dynamic. Do I want to dumb down the starting locations, which has very, very real benefits of me as the host and um, what i mean by that is if i make the quests in say this area give more xp so that people level up in this area a lot quicker they can a have more people further down towards end game content so that those people that are at end game content have got other people to group with and they're not on their own and then when new people join, they're not stuck in a very low population starting area because they get pushed through quickly into higher ones. In turn, I can then reduce 
some of the monster zones to become a lot lighter or smaller or even get rid of some quest chains altogether because they're not needed anymore to give the XP. And that in return reduces the server load for this area and saves me money. And it makes it easier for the devs to upkeep a zone that is effectively now dead. But I'm ruining the game. Kind of like you get with like WoW and people will like WoW Classic because the normal WoW is just so dumbed down in certain areas. You're going, well, is that my solution? Am I going to kill my starting zones to help the players that are at top end or not? Another solution, which is yet again something else you see in real life, is, well, I could put artificial barriers in. I could say, right, I've got a level 8 zone right now. If I disable my level 8 zone and close it off, then what would happen is the people in the level 7 zone would build up to become a larger quantity of players. And then when I was happy that there was enough people at end game content, I could then release the next zone and have the assurance that a large enough pool of people are going to go to that zone so that they could take on all of the content. But that gives me my, ne my next issue, which is the people in the level 7 zone that have finished the content, they're at the end game and they're then going to start complaining. They've got nothing to do, which is something else you see in current MMOs. And as I said, I never really expected to, to see and hit these kinds of issues in what is supposedly just a game for me to have a laugh. But from a game designer and development kind of standpoint, I've actually got a simulation tool here that allows me to try different things. It allows me to try and see if there's other ways that I can manage these flow dynamics of population that you don't encounter in other types of games. In a single player game, I can manage what this one player is gonna do quite easily. Even down to the economy, I know how much money he's gonna generate and I can make the game operate in such a way to drain the money from him. On a single player game, I could even have that economy be dynamic so that if he's got lots more money, well, <laughs> I can make things cost a bit more. I, I, I know that sounds a bit strange, but I can handle the rewards easier so that when this player meets a monster and gets the drop off it, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, this is great. But in an MMO, you can't do that. I can't dynamically change how much this one person spends on stuff because that's not fair if people around him are spending less or more. It needs to be consistent which means those people are generating more money because they are grinding out gold a lot more. Hey, this game's even got things whereby people, let's just see if we can see one. People can do AFK botting for gold farming and <laughs> this one there, this is the AFK gold farming bot. I'm going to send a report, I'm going to warn him. I mean, it's got all, all the kinds of things that you'd expect people to do, you know, item duping and all that kind of stuff. But, that actually is a very real thing whereby you're there thinking, well, how do you manage it so that rewards are rewards for anybody when you've got clearly economy creep? Yeah? The inflation of gold throughout the system is real. How are you managing it without hurting, you know, half the player base? So I am very much impressed by this game for not just being a game. It's It's gone beyond my expectations of the fact that I now have real life design and development challenges that I can simulate and try and think of different ways to impact in a game. That's just amazing. As I said, uh, it, this game does need a lot more coverage than it's getting. It's, I've, 
talk to the development guys on their discord the plans they have for this game are just massive the things they've got coming down with battlegrounds and you know the dungeons and raids and all the other stuff that they're adding is crazy you know all the unique customizable equipment and things that you can do is nuts and i understand okay some people are probably watching this and going oh my god these are very you know minimal um you know graphics that you could possibly have <laughs> but i understand that too yes the graphics are kept simple yeah low poly painting objects as much as possible why i already have forty five thousand subscribers on this world i've not even anywhere near close to finishing it there could be easy over a quarter of a million people running around on this world when i've actually got people to say level 20. all fighting all those monsters generating and popping and things going off and grouping and raiding and just the sheer volume of things that are happening and you have to understand that every single one of these characters every one of the forty-five thousand subscribers i've got at the moment actually keeps a quest log of what quests they've done from questers so they don't repeat it how far through a quest chain they are so they don't end up doing the same quest over and over yes okay they have added in things like purging lower level quests so to keep the the memory pool down but this game runs super smooth as it is on my machine hardly any memory or cpu usage and that's with this many people on you so i can understand there's got to be a balance here with regards to poly counts and everything else because once this gets to a vast amount of players you're going to be more messing about with trying to balance the game for your own machine and handling the amount of quests and population you're having than actually doing that from a world game design point of view which to be honest is where i think this really shines this game really shines from the mechanic of how do you manage that many people especially when it does come to say late game and i've got a huge proportion of my player base at level cap what do i do then to keep them happy if my maximum level is 20 and say they get to 20 do i just try and continue to add new level 20 zones that give them content to keep people happy will it keep the player base happy will they moan that there's no more advancement because some of these people do have stats with regards to advancement they're happy or not with how well they feeling like they get achieving in the game and rewards can i maintain that at end game which is an issue that you get nowadays from a game developer when you're looking at end game content in any game including single player games when somebody gets to the end of your game do you just give them a win screen and say okay you've won you know here's some credits you can play the game again or do you try and think of other things that that player can do if they want to keep playing more hours into the game not just through replayability but something that allows them to continue to advance do you do kind of like the diablo-esque thing whereby you do the whole content again but the whole thing goes up one level i mean you can't simulate that in this game but these are very real game design things where you're thinking well how do you manage the people who have got to end game cap in a mmo where you've got a subscription model that is a very real challenge because if they unsub you've just lost your revenue so anyway <laughs> i know that this is not probably the video that many people were expecting because it is purely talking about game design and development rather than hey come play this game this is fun this is purely a hang on if you are currently in university college wherever else and you're trying to do you know a degree on game design development whatever, this is a very real simulation tool that allows you to think about and address issues that you never ever get chance to simulate and play about modeling to see how you can affect 
the flow dynamics of some of these things? Do you agree that you have to spend money for developers to constantly go back and dumb down earlier zones and you're spending money on doing that so you can increase the flow dynamic to late game? Or do you spend your developers on trying to find other ways to keep everybody happy? Anyway, I'm hoping you're enjoying this video. It's it's a, it's a very interesting, from my point of view as a, as a dev myself, insight into things that I haven't thought about for quite some time. I'm loving the fact that I now have a tool to try and resolve some of those issues. So yeah, spam some likes on this uh, if you can, some comments, because as I said, this is a game that does need an awful lot more coverage. It does deserve it. The dev team has got so much more planned for this. And this is just a start. I mean, yes, okay, this is a low poly thing, but I'm thinking, hey, if this is a successful game, then other game developers or even this game developer in the future will create more advanced versions of this that could have, you know, much higher graphics counts in the future and all the rest of the goodies that maybe some people are looking at this and thinking, oh, if only it had this or that. Well, hey, if this isn't a success, you're probably not going to get that. If this is a success, then yeah, other other developers or other, you know, game studios with massive budgets or even this, you know, developer with all of the experience on doing this will be able to then make your dream come true and make you a simulation tool like this that's going to have all of the goodies you want. So yeah, make this game a success. That from a developer is, is, a, is a big plus because I think this is just an awesome tool as well as a fun game to play. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'll see you all next time. Bye.